Kashina. Hi, thanks for coming, first of all. Oh, it was awesome. Our pleasure. Um, who do you listen to now? Are there any artists that you like? Great question. I, right now I'm going through a, a Afrobeat, Latin beat phase. Um, Fela Kuti in the Afrobeat, is, I've been just engrossed in him. Uh, when I was in Cuba, I picked up some CDs, artists, I don't even know who they are. You know, there's just all these artists down there who don't, you know, they're just f well known on the island. And, and so I, that's the stuff I'm listening to right now. I'm really into that right now. I've I've gone through a lot of phases. Even though my a lot of my music is blues and blues based, this is just a part of my of of my uh, my influences over the decades. Uh, I, there are a lot of music I like, and there are a lot of music I like to play, and there are a lot of music I like to listen to. There are only two kinds of music: good and bad. Good and bad. <laughs> what about you? My children are like musicians now, and. They turn me on to everything, you know, like I, I listen to the new stuff, Green Day, you know, I'm in the, big into Billy Joel, I really think he's a great character, and he, they write good, meaningful music. So my son Dallas and my son Austin, they, they Dad, you got to hear this, they burn me stuff. <laughs> and of course, then they're into my stuff, so they, they've gotten the entire blues and jazz side of it, too, so they, let me borrow that, you know. So it's kind of like a give and take right now, and they're whatever they burn for me. They listen to some of it, you know, I really like it, you know, and, and then can I got to, I still teach, I give guitar lessons and, you know, the kids are constantly bringing in, I got this girl on Saturday who brought in Sugar, Sugar Land. I had no idea what Sugar Land was because I don't really dial up the country end of it, but I learned a lot. This gal sings great, the band is great, they play well together. and So I'm constantly learning from my students and my sons. And it's just kind of like, I don't really have to go anywhere. It's just falling in my lap all the time. Yeah, that's a good good point. I'll just make this last point and, and I'll, I'll, to top that off. Uh, now, I mean, you guys are living in an age where uh, you, uh, I'm not quite sure if you realize how blessed you are <clears throat> with the abundance of stuff, music included, that's available to you v via the internet, um, yeah. everything. When we were learning, when we were kids, that was all that stuff was. That none of that stuff was available, obviously. And we used to have to. I used to go into the uh, the record stores in the inner city up on Third and North, and I used to go to clubs in the inner city. Used to go down to Chicago, go to the South Side. I mean, that's the only place you could hear that music. Uh, you know, that's, that's your heritage. And uh, that's what I did. But you guys now are, you, it's all around you. All you have to do is press a button and dial up what you want, and it's there. You know. right. you, you're really lucky. Yeah. Um, okay. So I told my teacher I would love to sing with you guys. Do you guys know Senior Blues? Do we what? Do you know Senior Blues? The song? Senior, Senior Blues. That's senior blues. Senior oh. blues. Senior. senior. Is that the t <laughs> right, that's the jazz? That's a jazz tune, right? Well, senior I've heard blues. it a few different ways. Yeah. Okay. I think I think that's a. I want to say or Paul something else. I think you something. guys are great. Yeah. Honestly. Anyway, I've yeah. never heard harmonica like. The, well, oh. I never enjoyed it. Should I say? Well, <laughs> so this was amazing for me today. I Thanks learned. I learned it from your grandparents. <laughs> Probably. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think I know the song you're talking about, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, it would, it would probably I'll, be better to reverse I'll it. You I'll know? check on it. There, are, once again, you know, I mean, James, did you have a question? If you have time for one more question, um, at least. Having seen sort of you know the British invasion and and the evolution of blues through like you know decades. And people are now being like kind of reawakened to it. What would you say is sort of like the? What is the inherent quality about it that that keeps it like vibrant or like relevant, given the face of all these new musics and ways of creating? Well. 
like I say, up until this trip to Cuba, I was kind of losing my, my enthusiasm for it. But that's changed now. So um, I don't know if I can put it even answer that question um, and make sense out of it. I just realized, once again, that it's a gift. Music is a gift. And uh, it's my gift, as well as Jeff's and many, many people. Jim, Jim's gift and uh, Steve's gift uh, and many other people in here. Uh, and uh, as, a, as a gift, gifts can be taken away. They're given to you. They can also be taken away. And I realize that I better keep to using this gift if I want to keep it. So that's what kind of keeps, the, makes it vibrant. Does that sound too metaphysical? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. There's some kind of truth in it, I think. That's what attracted me to it, is you, like you can hear the person's life, you know, in reverse, you can dial into their life because they say something through their songs, and there's a certain kind of truth there that held, held an attraction for me. You hear the lyrics to the songs, not only the music, but it's, and in, in many cases, it's a certain kind of freedom. In other words, when you're playing, it's like, it's a, it's a freedom and it's a truth. And I think that's why blues continues to carry on because these people get into it and, you know, the songs that you feel that you should write about what's going on in your life, you're either, you're going to express a truthful situation. And so it cleanses you. It's the truth and it's a certain kind of freedom. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Any other questions? Make it quick, because our meter's our about meter to run out. meter just ran out. out. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just heard it. <laughs> okay, Ryan. Uh, was there a time you ever felt discouraged about music, or, and uh, if so, uh, what, was there anything that you did that, or something that happened to you that uh, made you realize you, that's something you wanted to do and continue doing? As my kids, my grandkids, and my grand and my son would say, "A uh, yeah." <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, the, the ups and downs are just exhausting. It steals you for the future. <laughs> Don't okay. laugh. I guess. I guess more it specifically, steals you for the future. I, I want to know what. What I mean. What. Uh, What answer did you come up with that helped you decide that's what you, you know, that's the best path for you? Once again, I was just driven. You know, I, I didn't analyze it. It was just something in me um, that drove me. And uh, that's about as clever as analytical as I can get. It just was always there. And like I say, I started playing drums when I was in grade school. It was just there. You'll work harder than you've ever worked at anything. Yeah, and real quick, uh, have you, are you guys fans of Les Paul and have you worked with him? What about Les Paul? Are you, fa are you fans of Les Paul and oh, have you worked with him? Of course. I've never worked with him, uh, but no. I, yeah, you can, if you're a musician and especially a guitar player, I do play a little guitar too, but uh, yeah. I mean, you, 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 can, you, you're, you can speak to that better. You know, I'm yeah. from Waukesha and I... I grew up knowing about Les Paul. My mother heard that on the radio, and she said, "That's that guy's from here." When I heard "Hold That Tiger" in 1953, "How High the Moon" and "Via Con Dios," this was in '52 and '53. My mom said these people are from town, so I had to search them out. It was an amazing character, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, one last question, and then we'll um, we'll close this session. Hi, my name is Terrell Putnam, man. I just want to know, are you guys interested in recording or collaborating with any new and upcoming artists? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I, I love the stuff some of the young kids are doing. I love it. I've, I've been playing with some young guys off and on recently, and um, they're amazing. I mean, it's an evolution, you know. Music is a, an always evolving thing, and the young Young people are always the ones who, who uh, introduce the innovations and the changes. 
and uh, there are some things going on in, in, in music by young being made by young musicians that really excite are exciting. Yeah, I'd love to. There are a bunch of guys, yeah. and I'm just talking about guys in, in in town here. You know, needless to say, guys out on the national scene. You know. So, how uh, could someone approach you? Um, <laughs> Um, I think I got, I have a card. I don't have a computer, but I have a card. <laughs> I am old school. I'm, I'm Caveman. Do you have a phone? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll both give you our cards as we're packing up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. On that note, gentlemen, do you have any closing remarks? Just thank you. Once again, thank you to all of you, uh, all of you students, all you people who just came in to listen, even if not students, and to all the staff. I, uh, you, thank you very much. Thank you. We're honored thank to Thank you very here. much. Thanks. Jim Leiben, Jeff Dagenhart. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, fellas. Steve. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. And I, and I hope you're getting me from my good side. <laughs>